welcome to a new video of my cricket dreams. So in this video, I plan to say top five things to watch out for in the Wisden Trophy decider between England versus West Indies. England and West Indies lock horns in the third and the final test of the Wisden Trophy, starting on July 24th. After West Indies pulled off a historic win in the series opener. England led by Ben Stokes staged a remarkable comeback in the second test to level the score. In the third test at the Emirates Old Trafford in Manchester, a lot is at stake in the first seven international series after the pandemic. Captain Joe Root will be looking to get back among the runs while for many England players like Joe Butler and Oli Pope, the game might be their last chance to take a claim for a regular spot in the 11. for the upcoming series against Pakistan for West Indies on the other hand captain Jason Alder who has recently been removed from the position of the number 1 test all-rounder will be looking to lead his team to another famous victory against the England overseas here we can look at top five things to watch out for in the decider of the Wisden Trophy number 1 could we see either team field two spinners for the first time After the first test was played at Southampton, the venue shifted to Manchester for the second and third test respectively. While the conditions have assisted Pacers so far throughout the series, spinners for both the teams, Dom Bass for England and Rosen Chase for West Indies have played very important roles as well. Bass has been accurate and has been picking up crucial wickets at regular intervals. The off spinner produced a Jaffa to get rid of Holder in the final session of the second test and even contributed some handy runs with bat in the first. Chase scalped a five wicket hole in the first innings of the second test and was a shining light in otherwise in speed West Indies bowling attack. The pitch could show some deterioration given the consecutive test matches are being playing at that venue and intermittent rains could have slowed the surface down further both teams could consider playing an extra spinner who could be vital towards the end of the match big rakim conwell is waiting in the wings for west indies while asha zero jack leach can be called upon by england as well and number 2 Changes in team composition seems inevitable for West Indies. The second test found West Indies wanting in more departments than one. The Pacers Sharon Gabriel, Kemar Roach and Alzari Joseph were ineffective throughout the series with later two in particular not in great form. Raymond Reefer could play in 11 owing to variety he would bring to the attack given that he is a left armer the young chamar holder is seen to be one of the future but his time to shine might have already come the batting which was supposed to be led by shay hope has flattered to deceive with various footwork issues plaguing all of them west indies coach phil simmons hinted after the game that we might see changes in the batting lineup and many former cricketers have claimed that shay hope should be given a rest with the bigger picture in mind keeper shane dowrich bagged a pair in the second test but should retain his place in the side given his useful contributions with the bat in the recent past and the fact that his replacement is hope himself irrespective we should see changes in west indies lineup and those players who are incorporated into the side must be at the top of the game against a confident england side and number 3 Will James Anderson make into the 11 if he returns? James Anderson, England's leading wicket-taker in test cricket, James Anderson was rested for the previous game after a largely average performances in the first test. The pacer has struggled with injuries in the recent past, but given his week of rest, he is expected to make a return to England squad for the series decider against West Indies. But does Anderson walk into the side? His partner in crime Stuart Broad picked up five wickets after sitting out the first test and looked threatening whenever he came on the ball especially with the West Indies batsmen very uh, with West Indies batsmen struggling in the in swinger 
Chris Forbes, who was late addition to the 11, also scalped six wickets and offers a similar treat as Anderson done with the new ball. Moreover, Forbes is handy with the bat in hand as well as in the field. Sam Curran is cut from the same cloth and has never been on losing side of a test match at home. Anderson could well find himself out of the 11 despite his stature, just like a certain pacer of barbarian descent. And number 4. What's going on with Jofra Archer? England pacer Jofra Archer hasn't been, a gay, hasn't been great two weeks. A Twitter feud with former West Indies pacer Tino Best conceded with a toothless bowling display in Southampton Test before Archer broke biosecure protocols on his way to Manchester, resulting in a fine and a formal warning. Recently, Archer lamented the fact that he is always in the spotlight claiming that he cannot sneeze without it being the news. He also alleged racial abuse in the wake of his poor decision to head home on his way to Old Trafford. The 25-year-old revealed that he is unsure of playing in the third test all through Ben Stokes and Joe Root have openly stated that England needed him. Even ECB managing director Ashley Gills threw his weight behind the under-fire fast bowler. Jofra Archer says that he might not be in right frame of mind to play the test and it remains to be seen if he features in the Western Trophy decider. And number 5 and the last one is, can Ben Stokes endure his current workload? When Ben, Sto when ben Stokes was announced as a captain for the first test, pundits called it a full decision because there simply isn't anyone who does more on cricket ground than him. And in the second test, he proved just why. After 355 ball vehicle in the first innings and an attacking cameo in the second, Stokes bowled his hurt out on an aggressive spell of short pitch bowling. This is apart from the concentration that is required to feel in the slips for two whole innings. England coach Chris Silverwood claimed that the team is going to consider rotating the all-rounder. But with the series on the line, the decision to drop him will be very costly one. With the batting lineup inexperienced and the bowling attack not settled that much, the three lines needed Stokes more than ever have. The Durham man felt some stiffness towards the end of his marathon effort in the second test and understandably so Ben Stokes will probably play the third test but can he take the massive workload he has been put under? We can see these answers only in the third test which will happen on 24th July 2020. Thank you friends for watching my channel, guys. like, subscribe and comment and for more such notifications of the World Cricket Kali Sofkai channel and also kindly like, share and comment the video. Thank you.